And welcome to the webinar we're running for TAD Summit Asia, where we're going to learn about all those exciting things that Appigate are getting up to. We're very fortunate to have Richard M from Appigate here. The structure for this webinar will be, Richard will provide an introduction to himself and Appigate. I'll then provide a quick intro to what we're getting up to with TAD Summit Asia. Then Rich is going to give you a preview of some of the material that it's going to cover in his uh, keynote. So really excited to uh, hear about that. We've also had a few questions sent through uh, ahead of time. So I'm going to go through uh, those questions as well. And uh, after that, we'll wrap things up. So Richard, Sounds thanks good. so much for joining us. Good uh, morning. Provide a little bit of an intro to uh, yourself and what Abigate is. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Richard. Um, I've been with Epic a about a year now, um, and I think most of us have kind of um, heard a lot of the success stories about Idea Mom, which um, you know Epic a have started. And last few years, there's been, uh, I guess, a journey from the kind of the Idea Mart business um, evolving into Epic a. So um, I guess I'm here in, the, in terms of the webinar to kind of introduce, you know, how we've evolved over the last few years. Um, and and what are we doing going forward? So my role in Epigate is is as a as a direct in partnership. So, but as you know, for the last uh, couple of years we've known each other. My, my passion's always been um, looking at digital transformation. How can the telco business change into being a more of a digital business player? Uh, and what are the things that kind of be um, is enabler for that kind of um, success for that, right? So um, focusing on in Epigate, I think basically. You know, we've gone through the um, the kind of the learning as well. It was a basically idea. Ma was an internal um, initiative, looking to the same problem: how do we utilize, expose the telco assets, um, and, and, and monetize from that? And that was the initiative as part of idea Ma, which a lot of people have uh, know about in terms of the success stories. And as part of that journey, we've, we've gone through from going into um, that business model into um, consolidating three businesses essentially, uh, which is the idea mart. Um, there's also a joint event and initiative with um, each other with uh, WSO2 as a, a dot telco. And also the, um, um, the platform uh, business as well as the, the hub businesses um, that we built on top of that. So that was the ecosystem and services that we built as part of the idea mart and platform. And we've consolidated that as Epigate in the last couple of years. Right. And I think I think the, the the kind of the intention and strategy behind that is it's really it's kind of shift away from just doing another digital transformation plan and supporting that. And that's been going in the telco industry for like, I mean, the last five, ten years in this initiative of you know digital transformation. Um, so we've, we've kind of taken that position, but we're shifting and focusing more in terms of strategy, in terms of kind of approach to monitor instead, right? How do we develop new, uh, you know, monetization use cases, new models, wrap up services, um, and, and tie different kind of elements that you talk about a lot uh, as part of a program of Telco, which is, you know, the, the t technology piece, the people, the processes, how do we bring that together with a partner ecosystem to build up new kind of value chain um, and new kind of monetization use cases in which we can go to the market and kind of build uh, a different stream of revenue. So that's been our kind of the focus for Epigate, which is um, let's not just get stuck on this, this concept of enabling <laughs> digital transformation. But let's find a new way forward um, and exploring and, and, and testing the market to see what, what is the kind of things that's working. Uh, and that's essentially what we've done. So. Um, as part of that, of, of course, we've been kind of developing few key business models. Um, uh, you know, the payment solution, um, leveraging the kind of the carrier billing capability, something obviously we are doing as part of the Asia um, group and of course. Um, but going forward, we're trying to develop new use cases and services like um, location-based services, mobile identity, new range of services that we're looking to expose and utilize uh, as part of the kind of the capability we are exposing to our partners uh, and to various kind of industries, right? Um, so, you know, we've been spending the last couple of years building the ecosystem. Um, and that ecosystem really has started with kind of the focus on consumer segments like games, videos, 
um, et cetera, to kind of help utilize the, the kind of the, the billing and payment capability. Um, and in addition to that, we've been kind of working with our sister companies like Boost and ADA to kind of to see um, how do we kind of expand and increase the kind of the differential customer service around payment solutions, for example. Um, and how do we make that frictionless? How do we make the experience um, as efficient as possible? So that's the kind of the core business we've been focusing on. Um, but I think it's just really the start, I think, really. Um, I think it's the start of the journey. Um, but we are heading in the kind of the right direction in terms of, you know, we're looking really way of, you know, disrupting what we're doing in terms of assets business. The mindset is, you know, let's move quick with the market. Um, let's come up with something innovative. Um, so that's kind of been the kind of the direction for Epic for the last um, few years. Excellent, Richard. That's very clear. So let me provide a little bit of uh, intro to TED Summit, and then let's get into uh, what you're going to be telling us about at TED yes. Summit. Yes. So firstly, I'm very proud you'll be able to join us at uh, TED Summit Asia. I, you know, Richard and I have a long history together, but uh, yes. you know, we'll <laughs> share more of that at the event. Uh, now, TAD Summit began all the way back in 2013 in Bangkok. Uh, there, the focus was on promoting telecom APIs, which yes. would soon become known as CPaaS, that is, Communication yeah. Platform as a Service. Now, nearly half of the sponsors of TAD Summit have been acquired. Uh, many yeah. of the presenters uh, are now leading is rapidly growing industry that's revolutionizing communications or yeah. telecoms. I mean, you can use t communications, telecoms interchangeably. It's a $1.2 trillion industry. Yeah. Now, the thing that's really interesting over the past uh, six years is CPaaS is now a building block of so much more across unified communications as a service, contact center as a service, telecom app service, multi-factor authentication, instant authentication, the list goes on of all yep. the capabilities that uh, have been created. What we've tried to do uh, with TAD Summit is use the term CX tech, uh, a little yep. bit like FinTech, uh, to try yep. and capture the breadth of this category where the C stands for connectivity, communications, collaboration, conversation, customer, X, of course, for experience, because that's what matters. And then tech, because we are focusing on enablers. But I think what you're hinting at, uh, Richard, in your introduction there, is the importance of looking beyond enablers into real, viable yeah. use cases, solutions, and business models. So with TAD Summit Asia, what we're trying exactly. to do is if you're a CIO trying to understand what all these acronyms mean, CBAS, UCAS, CSAS, chatbots, cloud communication, omnichannel communications means to your business, and what's really possible versus slideware, TAD Summit will provide that clarity of insight you need. Now, if you're a uh, technology or a service provider in this segment, You'll be able to meet peers with a track record of innovation in this space in an open environment to help you grow your business together. Let me just yep. mute Ivan there because he's occupied. There you go. Just muted okay. Ivan. He joins, but he was uh, grabbing the uh, screen there. Uh, if you're a uh, technology uh, service provider, you'll meet peers with a track record of innovation in this space in an yep. open environment to help you grow your business together, creating the future faster. The telcos and uh, CSPs, communication service providers, and of course, the strategic suppliers, because it's sort of a bit of an atomic unit there. Uh, TAD Summit provides independent thought leadership around the future of telecoms and can help build the partnerships to grow your communications business together, which of course, squarely what Appigate's all about. Yeah. Now, with TED, TED Summit, we may not tell telcos, CSPs what they want to hear, but we stand by our track record in yeah. showing where the future is going. Now, for developer students, TED Summit provides an insight into an exciting technology space that can set your career on the fast track. For regulators, <laughs> thought leaders, you'll meet the brain trust of this growth engine revolutionizing telecoms. As I said, that's a 1.2 trillion, not billion, $1.2 trillion industry. So think of what we're doing with TED Summit is very much telecoms done in a web way. 
So that's my yes. little piece explaining what TAD Summit's about. What we'll do now is hand back to you, Richard. And please, if you can uh, provide a uh, introduction, a teaser to your keynote. <laughs> sure, uh, happy to do that. Um, so I kind of alluded to um, the kind of the direction that um, Epic Ed is doing. So the keynote is really kind of going to detail about the journey that we mentioned before. Uh, and some of the learnings about our journey, um, you know, why we made certain decisions to consolidate some of the businesses um, and what we've done in the past in terms of, you know, what are the partner ecosystem we are building? Um, and how we basically connect connecting some of the technology with API, um, connecting the models and kind of build a whole package around how do we go to the market instead of just looking at the enablers. So we are looking at the whole picture of what we are doing um, in terms of the current businesses and what are the new business models we are building so that you've got a sense of the idea of, you know, what is required to kind of go to market uh, and just not look at the technology piece, which we tend to do sometimes, which is, you know, can APIs monetize? Well, APIs is just a part of the services. Uh, but you got to connect the capability of the partners, you got to connect the capability of the telco assets and kind of test the market and kind of look at the kind of the commercial model in which it's a win-win for the ecosystem. It's not just a win-win for the, the operators, right? And we've been basically um, partnering with, uh, um, in terms of the platform play, um, a lot of our partners are looking for coverage. They are not looking for just how do I launch this service for a particular m and They're looking for how do I launch these services for this country? How do we launch these services for the region um, and other regions? So basically from this kind of this platform model in which we've got the kind of the, the partners and southbound connections, we're expanding horizontally uh, with kind of our channel partnership and what we call hub, hub connections and partnership with operators like Globe, um, with, uh, with Orange and other large groups that gives us the coverage and then we're basically using that as a way of taking a partner, let's say in China, for example, who wants to sell the games um, as a service to this region, but also interested to do this in Middle East, in, in Africa, for example. And therefore, um, it also allows the, the traffic to go the other way, which is can the, the traffic and content from Middle East and Africa flow down to Asia? So that's creating a new way of doing kind of the business flows uh, and it's very countries and regions and across the industries so um, and I think I think that's been quite successful the last couple of years and from the kind of reaction from a lot of the partners you can see uh, thing that's very active in terms of um, not just but the whole the motion model the coverage supporting the partners in terms of market insights um, you know working with our kind of sister company like ADA that gives them market insights or the demographics, the segments, uh, what are the kind of the, um, you know, the behaviors around consuming of different kind of content and, and services um, as a package is, is something that we are focusing on, right? And I think that's been kind of um, something that I want to present as part of the keynote. And I think that will be something that's very interesting for, for the industry. No, that's excellent. I think it's been very impressive, the work that Abigate's done in crafting this solution. And as you say, uh, you know, for some of your, your sort of uh, partners, they're looking for country distribution and yes. being able to, you know, because one of the things I see in the sort of evolution of uh, sort of the whole sort of telecoms industry is the diversity across countries. And let's take something as simple as yes. messaging. When you're in Japan, yeah. it's line. SMS is not there. You know, uh, yeah. uh, you know, while, you know, if we're talking about Malaysia, then you've got WhatsApp, very healthy yeah. uh, sort of SMS market. So, again, from country to country, very different shifts and very different because it's exactly. impacted by culture, by so many other factors. But this, you know, again, that was a great introduction to uh, your keynote. Really looking forward to it in a month's time. Yeah. So what we'll do now is right. ask some questions. So three questions I've got uh, that have been sent through to me. The first sure. is, and it's a very frank question, um, given the <laughs> failed attempts at offering APIs, engaging developers, innovators, and digital transformation by most telcos over the past 10 years, 
What is Appigate doing differently? Yeah, I think I alluded on that a little bit um, as well. Um, but if you look at what the tokens have done, they've been focusing a lot of their investment. If you look at where the investment's been going, uh, it's been going into transforming their assets, core business, the infrastructure, and they've been continually trying to find a way to improve that, make it more agile, make decouple the infrastructure to apps, all that kind of thing. And that's been continuing for the last five, 10 years, as the question alludes to. Um, but that itself hasn't come up with a new way of doing business, a new way of monetizing, because essentially we are doing the same business. Um, despite all the investments we are making into the infrastructure, we are still talking about, as you said, we're talking about uh, mobile data, you're talking about voice messaging, but there haven't been with a significant investment, a new business model in which we can grow going forward. And as you know, if once the data starts, you know, um, saturating in the market to 70, 80% in the market in different areas, I mean, it's basically utility services. So what's next? So there is a very fine, there's a finite time in which we have to come up with the answer. And it's not 10 and 20 years, it's, it's next five to 10 years. We, we need to come up with a new answer. What is the new business model? And that's not clear yet. Um, and, and, and therefore, um, you know, our focus for Epiget is not around digital transformation or enablement. It's all about creating a, a service complementary to your core businesses and launching services and test the market, come up with content, location-based service, new way of monetizing. And some of that is going to be learning how to monetize from the data that's already in the, in the ecosystem. It's already in the telco um, um, environment. And we haven't yet tapped into the kind of the data monetization yet. Um, which I think is the kind of the one of the key um, kind of the potential monetization um, models going forward. So that's something that we're also exploring. Uh, that's the kind of the mindset we are looking at. You know, how do we monetize from the existing nexus? Exactly. I mean, there's so many opportunities. I mean, in my introduction to that summit, I mentioned about instant authentication. Just using yeah. the knowledge a telco has about yes. the account that you know that number. Uh, you know, is invaluable in so many scenarios. Uh, I remember yeah. I was doing a piece of work for a operator in Nigeria. Trust, yeah. big issue in Nigeria. And again, yes. you know, <laughs> that operator has in their databases most probably the greatest credit rating system <laughs> within Nigeria that remains to this day unmonetized. <laughs> So I agree. There's yeah. so many opportunities in this yes. space. It's exactly. just, you know, as you say, don't focus on all the bells and whistles with the technology infrastructure and all the we, you know beautiful things you can do there. Just focus on finding that new business. So wholeheartedly support yes. you in that approach. Absolutely. On to the second yep. question. This is focusing more on the content services. So which yep. markets do you think mobile content services? Now, you know, the, the question is said, you know, listed the you know music video games personalization yeah. still have opportunities for telcos given the rise of android sm smartphones across asia yeah i mean um, i mean we I, I face this question all the time about you know, what's the what's the differential value that telcos bring with this content you know whether it's games and videos versus let's say um google google store and various other ways of accessing the content right um, so I think I think there's definitely opportunity, but we have to look at it as a service. We have to focus on the customer experience, right? So if you are doing providing these services, for example, where you are a gamer and you are able to access that um, information using, for example, if it's an unbanked environment, you can pay for your mobile accounts, mobile payments. That's one thing. That's something that we're already monetizing. But what if you did mobile identity, as you kind of mentioned before, if my game account was authenticated using mobile authentication and it's secured in that fashion, that's another level of customer experience that, that would attract me. So we can build on that, that would differentiate against other OTTs who are already distributing this kind of content in music. Um, out there uh, with um, the capital we ha already have, you know. So I think I think what we haven't done is kind of look at the, the customer journey and see how we can kind of add on to that as a differentiation of the journey. Um, then looking at just kind of, you know, the assets that we have, but you know, look at how can we complement the journey 
with the capability we have. And I think that focus would help kind of differentiate what the telcos would do versus what the OTT would do, I think, going forward. Excellent. Thank you, Richard. And just wrapping up on the uh, last question, uh, can the old SMS ATP players compete with the mobile multi-channel marketing companies? Uh, the examples there being like Twilio and SendGrid. So now it's a one-stop shop. I have my mobile market campaign manager management, uh, all that service. I've got multi-channel support in there across SMS, email, RCS possibly. Uh, we'll be discussing that at TED Summit Asia. Uh, and all the other, as you say, uh, messaging channels that yes. are used around the world. Uh, yes. And there's sort of a second part to the question in terms of not just you know, how do these old players remain relevant, but are businesses really looking for APIs or are they actually looking for services, that is, solutions to a problem? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I think I think straight up, I think some, that's something that we've discussed many times as part of the kind of discussion with industries. Um, you know, API itself, um, and there's so much focus on having APIs and enabling APIs and so forth, but APIs on its own, it, it's not a new service. It's not a new business opportunity and, and so forth, right? So definitely it's a service. Um, and I think in a way the messaging has evolved, right, from you know, traditional SMS from you know, person to person messaging, which is declining, which is which is what the telcos are kind of um, familiar with. But as messaging and voice is evolving to different kind of use cases in terms of um, enterprises, in terms of um, applications and things that are utilizing the voice and messaging in a different way. And I think in those kind of um, use cases, it's growing actually. Uh, you know, A, A, A to P SMS is, uh, I think it's forecast to be about 1.7 trillion uh, 2018. So it's a massive market that's continued to grow, actually. It's not declining. So I think in that sense, um, there's definitely a growth in that segment. Is it going to compete? Well, I think it's complementary because, I mean, multi-level cha you know, channel marketing, emails and different kind of thing has its own use cases. And I think the example you mentioned around that was, you know, uh, messaging for um, Uber and Spotify and different kind of OTT um, apps using this kind of other kind of channels. Um, but certainly there's a, there's a lot of um, use cases for um, A2P, um, for authentic authentication, authorization, different kind of ways of um, using that kind of messaging systems, right? So um, I don't think it's necessarily a competition, but I think it's a complementary to different ways of messaging being involved into different use cases. Um, and I think the focus should be around um, services. The focus should be around the customer experience of that services. And I think, I think in that sense, the tokens will do quite well. Excellent, excellent. That's a great note to finish on. Again, Richard, I'm looking forward to catching up uh, at the end of next month. And I think you've done an excellent job in giving quite a good teaser for your uh, <laughs> keynote. Again, thank you so I'm much for your time. To it. Thanks, Alan.